Welcome to Touch Technology Review today, a quick demonstration of the video capability of the iPhone XR. I've got the iPhone situated about one and a half meters away from me, mounted onto a tripod, and it's recording this very opening scene. And by way of comparison, I've also got the Canon 5D Mark III on another tripod recording the same scene. So I can show you the difference between the professional grade equipment using a full frame DSLR camera and the video you get out of an iPhone. Now, it's not a fair comparison, of course, because the 5D has a much larger sensor. It is professional grade and it's also using a prime L series lens. So not a fair comparison, but something that was of great interest to me because I'm using the Canons as my prime uh, technology for producing videos on this channel. But when I was asked a question as to whether an iPhone could replace my equipment, I thought I'd run the test just to see for myself. So what you're going to see is a difference between the quality of the video in the shadows more than anything else. And you've probably noticed it yourself when you take photos on your iPhone in an outdoor environment and there's plenty of sun, the photos look absolutely amazing and would compare to just about any photo taken from a professional DSLR camera when you first look at that image. But when it comes to the shadow areas, when it's darker, you've got interior scenes that aren't well lit, you're probably gonna notice a lot of noise and grain. And that's what you can see in the difference between these clips here, that we're in an indoor scene right now. We've got mostly natural light coming in from the left and the right. I've only got a very small LED light bank providing a little bit of illumination on the subject matter. And uh, there's a fair bit of shadow around in the dark areas. And if you were to look at it closely, the iPhone does carry a fair bit of grain. Certainly nothing to be worried about, certainly not gonna get in the way of producing a great video. And certainly given the, the environment we're in now where it's really more about the content itself and the story that you're telling, it's not so important to be focused and fixated upon the quality. But just so you know, there is a difference in terms of quality between an iPhone and a DSLR camera, despite the marketing and advertising suggesting otherwise. The other thing to think about is the audio. Now, I've got a lapel microphone on me at the moment, so that's recording this audio, and I prefer to use a lapel microphone because it helps get nice and close to the vocal box, and it eliminates some of that echo and the reflection that comes into the recording when you're recording directly off your devices. So if I switch over to the iPhone now, you'll hear that it sounds a little bit more echoey, but nonetheless, given that it's situated over a meter away, it actually sounds quite reasonable. Now, if you're vlogging at this distance, this is the audio that you'll get. If you get a bit closer, it'll sound even better. So it's really quite acceptable as a vlogging camera in terms of the audio that it produces as well. So it really passes the test for me there. But again, it doesn't compare to using professional equipment in terms of audio and doesn't compare to the quality that you get on the Canon 5D Mark III. Also with the 5D Mark III, the other advantage, again unfair, is that I get to use an L-series prime lens. It's premium glass, it's an 85 portrait lens, which really allows you to do a couple of things. First of all, allows the subject to punch out from the background a bit more. It also allows you to play around with the background blur and it helps you to isolate the subject further. So there's a number of reasons why using a prime lens is superior to using a built-in lens on any smartphone. So there's a difference just as a test, a matter of interest just to see what the difference would be. In my final summary of it all, I would have to say that as a vlogging camera, you could definitely get away with using the iPhone XR, but if you're serious about your video production, there's still gonna be a great advantage upgrading to a DSLR camera or any dedicated video camera. So hopefully this test was of use to you. If you've got any questions about the iPhone XR, even the Canon 5D or shooting video in general, feel free to put those questions in the comments box below. If there's other things you'd like me to present on this channel in relation to the iPhone, shooting video, any other topic whatsoever, also feel free to make those suggestions in the comments box. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it so you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.